video we're going to be making a bouncing ball in processing and the first thing I'm going to do is open the processing sketch and I'm going to um, write a setup function and I'm going to write a draw function and just to see that it's running smoothly I'm going to make a canvas that's 800 pixels wide and 800 pixels high and I'm gonna include a background that I'm going to set to 255 which means it's gonna be pure white and there you can see there's the canvas 800 pixels by 800 pixels now I'm gonna make a new tab and this is gonna be used for when I write a new class so I'm gonna call the class ball so right here, I'm um, declaring the class. And then inside, I'm going to write the constructor. The constructor also has to be the same um, name as the class name. So what do you think when, you're, when you are going to write a ball in a canvas? First thing you need is the first thing you need is position and you need size so we need an X and a Y I'm just gonna write it as a random X that's um, the whole width of the screen it could be any pixel of the whole width of the screen and a, a Y that could be any range in height and then the size I'm just making it 50 pixels and so I initialized them but now I have to declare them so I'm declaring a X by float x and I'm declaring a y by float y and then I'm making an integer for size because size is only going to be a whole number of pixels I'm not going to have I'm not going to have half a pixel in size you could make it a float and it would still work but I think it just rounds to the, the nearest whole number and here I'm writing some functionality for the class so I'm writing a display function and I'm going to add no stroke because I don't want an outline to show up on the ellipse that I draw. And the fill, I'm just going to make it 255.00, so it's going to be red. And then now I'm going to write an ellipse that will draw a circle at x, y, size, size. The reason it draws a circle is because you put size twice, because both deal with so the first size deals with the width of the ellipse, and the second one deals with the height of the ellipse. Just like a rectangle you would draw. So now, it doesn't do anything, because the first thing you need to do is declare it in your actual program you're going to be running in the setup and draw function. So, I'm making an array of objects, and I'm making ball, there's 10 balls in the array. And then I'm making a for loop so I can initialize all the balls in the array. So for int i equals 0, i greater than balls.length. And why you make it i less than balls.length is because you're saying 10, but it starts counting at 1. I mean, it starts counting at 0 in an array. So i actually go 0 all the way through 9 and you want to stop it there because that's 10. If you do equals balls, if you do um, equals balls that, if you do i is equal to or less than, you're going to end up with 11 balls instead of 10. And there we um, create a new ball for every instance in the array. And then here we are adding the functionality to it. So we, any function we want to call from the class so in this case we only wrote one function so we're calling balls i dot display so you're calling the display function for every ball and here we go so all the balls are randomly displaced in the field or canvas and now we want to um, add movement to the balls so the first thing you do is write a function and you can call it whatever i called it move and inside of there, you're going to add stuff that helps animate it. So the first thing you're going to do is 
you have a position of the ball. And so you want the position to be moved every single frame. And in this case we're doing x is moving them by speed, or the amount of pixel speed is, every single frame in animation. And if x is greater than the width of the screen, so if it actually touches the width of the screen, you want it to come back. You want it to go the opposite way. But the first thing I'm going to do is, there's two different bounds for X or for the ball. You want it to be zero and you want it to be width, because it could either go, uh, go out of the canvas either direction. And so that's why I'm making it an or if statement with an or statement in, in between. So the or is the two straight lines. So it's x is greater than width or x is less than zero. Call this functions. Now the next thing that's happening inside the if statement is I'm adding speed x equals speed x times negative one. And what that is doing is that it's changing the speed and flipping it. So if it was going right, if the speed was making uh, causing it to go right and it hit the width, it causes it to become a negative speed so it's going the opposite way and then hits the opposite side. And um, you first have to declare the variables and initialize them, so I added float speed x and speed x equals 2. I ran it again, but nothing's happening. That's because you have to add the function in the draw function. So balls instance i.move. And here we can see the balls are going to the right, bouncing off, and then coming the opposite way but we also want it to happen in the y direction. So now I'm just gonna copy the code because it's the same thing you're gonna be doing for the y direction, you're just gonna have to change some of the variable names. So instead of speed x, it's gonna be speed y. So for all those, I'm changing them. And then instead of width, it's gonna be height. And I now that I made a new variable called speed y, I have to declare it and initialize it so float speed y and um, speed y equals 2 and then when I run the program it's working but nothing's changing and moving in the y direction and that is because I forgot to change the x's to y equals y plus speed y and again, it's somewhat working, but it's not because you can see the balls are falling really far in down into the canvas. And we forgot to change if x greater than height or x greater than zero should be y. And there we go. Now we can see it's working, it's running. If the middle of the ball is greater than the parameter's width, it makes it come the opposite way. So, but there is kind of a problem, and the problem is there isn't very, very much variation in the speed. So, a quick way to resolve that is just to add a random speed. So, we're just going to make it a random speed between 2 and 4 in the x direction, and a random speed between 2 and 4 in the y direction. This will allow also more variation in the movement of the balls. Now, you can see they move a lot better. But if you saw in the beginning, they're moving, they bounce off a lot more, there's a lot more variation. But once you see you run it, you can see they all start moving downward and to the right every single time. And we want it to not always be every single time. So a quick way to do this is just to think half the time it goes one way, half the time it goes another way for x direction the same thing for the y direction. So we're just going to make a flip coin function that you can I kind of used in another one of my um, other tutorials on processing so you can check that out. And the flip coin function I just made it random between 0 and 1 and if flip coin is I have to put a parentheses first and if flip coin is greater than 0 
which is kind of half of the random functions. You just change the speed x to be the opposite of what it was. So the quick way to do that is just do equals speed x times negative 1. And that way when you run it, the x's, they went both ways, but they still went down in the y direction first off. And a simple way to fix this is to add two different flip coins for x and y. So before I do this, I'm just going to rename the flip coin function flip coin x. And I'm adding new f function flip coin y equals random between 0 and 1. And it is not declared, so we first have to declare that as a float flip coin y. And I just co copied the code and changed flip coin x to flip coin y and speed x to speed y. Now you can see it starts from different directions every single time. So it goes in different directions. Every um, every ball is moving in different directions. That's what we want. So now I'm going to add more particles. And this is the good thing about making an array. You can just quickly change how many particles you have. So now we have 50 balls hitting off the canvas and going every other ways. And another thing to think about is you can see some of the particles are overlapping each other. And a way to kind of visualize that is there's also, instead of just RGB, there's also an alpha function. So if you put 255 for the alpha, you're going to get exactly what you get because 255 is the default alpha. If you put zero, you get nothing is filled because the alpha is super transparent. It deals with the transparency of it. And so here I'm making it 255 divided by 2. So it's going to be half transparent, half um, you'd be able to see it. And you can see that when it overlaps, the color is greater because there's more objects. And just to see particles a little better, um, there you can see. But you can see if they overlap, they become a darker red. And I will leave you with this. There's a lot of other stuff you could do. And you can see the particles are moving across, hitting the wall, and bouncing back. Another thing you could do is also, instead of just x greater than width, you could also add width minus, um, change so that the very outline of them bounces instead of the middle of them bouncing. I want to add to this program to make it seem even more interesting than it actually is right now, is to add a random RGB for every single ball. And a quick way of doing this is just to change the fill instead of a number is to make it a variable. And we're just going to declare the variables as float r, float g, and float b. Then what you do in the constructor, we're just going to do it at the very beginning of the constructor, is we're going to make it r is equal to a random um, number between 0 and 255. Of course, if you start at 0 and you just want the end value, you don't have to put both numbers. And now I'm just pasting the same code for R and changing the variable name to G and B. And now when you run it, you get different colors. And you can see, there they are. Um, just to be able to see them a little better, I'm going to take off the alpha and run it again. And there you can see are the colors. And there are any other uh, any of 16 million different combinations of colors. And just to make it look even more interesting, I'm going to add more balls, and I'm going to change the size to half of what it was before. And there you can see are a lot of different balls bouncing off the canvas and I'll make it even 200 and there we go thank you
please comment, please subscribe, and goodbye.